Well, summer's in full swing and the year is flying by. I can't believe that it's almost 4th of July. The pH in my lawn is going sky high, but now it's time we do something about it. <clears throat> hey, aloha everybody. This is Brad the Lawn Sauce here in the lawn. Um, I have my assistants here, Ken on the swing and my cameraman Shane in the background. Now today we'll be taking a look at sulfur and the difference between powdered sulfur versus granular sulfur and we're gonna see what we're gonna run some experiments here and we're gonna see which one is best uh, to put in the lawn and which one I'm gonna put down and how I'm gonna put it down so stay tuned so the powdered sulfur that we'll be looking at today is by high yield it's a dusting wettable sulfur it's actually marketed as a, a fungicide um, the label says it's a group M2 fungicide used to treat for spider mites and powdery mildew and black spot. Um, it's sulfur nonetheless. Uh, it's actually 90% sulfur and there's 10% other ingredients in it. Now, this wettable sulfur uh, is different than normal, normal powdered sulfur. Like, I've tried a normal powdered sulfur and it does not dissolve in water, it just sits on the surface. So the 10% um, of other ingredients in this sulfur it's probably a surfactant um, built in so that it'll mix with the water better. Now the granular sulfur here, it's about 20% clay and about 80% sulfur. Now we're going to be taking a look at how well it breaks down um, and how well it penetrates to the soil. That will give us some kind of indication as to how well it will, um, the microbes will break it down, how quickly it will start acidifying the soil. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the penetration of granule. So when you sprinkle granular out, it'll go something like this. And as you water it, it will help the sulfur to get mixed into the soil profile. With the granular, it's going to take some heat and some time for that, that granule to break down and the sulfur to be released and the microbes to eat it. So immediately, if I were to say that the granular is not very effective as to getting um, sulfur immediately into the so soil. Now you got to imagine that there are grass roots going all across the top surface of your grass going down, which is going to make it even tighter and harder for these granules to work its way through the soil profile and acidifying the layer of soil where your roots are growing. Let's take a look at the powdered sulfur now and how it reacts uh, in that sense. <clears throat> now, here's my powdered sulfur mix. Okay. And I already know that my soil is a little hydrophobic, so I'm going to add a little bit of wetting agent to this. <clears throat> and I have been um, pretty su uh, successful with this Pantera. A wetting agent so I like this product and I'm just gonna put just a little inside which is a little wetting agent into the mix here so here we go let's take a look at what this does Let me angle the camera a little bit Okay, just watching and observing what's happening here. You can see all the um, sulfur particulate up here and it's collecting along the surface of the soil. But there's micropores all throughout the soil. Let's rotate this. That the wetting agent is helping the water to go down and down and down. And you can see um, sulfur particulate getting down deeper into the soil profile as the water gets absorbed in. Let's just let this go for a little bit. I'm going to pause the camera and we'll take a look at it after the water fully absorbs in. Okay, a couple minutes has elapsed and the water level has gone down. Uh, taking a look at the profile of the, sur of the soil here. <clears throat> you can see that there's some um, sulfur particulate uh, working its way down. 
Now, this was only 300 milliliters of water that I put in. And this soil is very tight. Um, it's very fine. There's no uh, porosity in this particular soil. But in any case, you can kind of see um, sulfur particulate working its way down. Um, this is getting into the areas where the microbes are living and each watering, subsequent watering will push the sulfur down further into the super tiny pores um, into the soil structure and work its way down. You can see the sulfur working its way down all the way through here. I don't know if you can see it. Let me bring it closer to the camera. So that's a good, um, I'd say inch down, inch and a half down into the soil in some places. On the granular side, the granular sulfur is just kind of sitting there. Maybe some is partially buried and working its way down. And here you can see on the surface of this one, all the powder sulfur kind of sitting at the, at the top. Remember that sulfur that I mixed earlier? It's still solid. Let's mix it up a little bit more. Sitting in this water here for the last, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes. It has not broken down. Okay, so after taking a look at the results, I'm gonna go with the powdered sulfur versus the granular sulfur to add to my lawn. Now, how the sulfur acidifies your soil, you know, it's kind of a science and Matt Martin talks about it a lot, but essentially the sulfur will get digested by the microbes and by doing so, hydrogen ions are released, which the hydrogen acidifies the soil. Now in a season, um, it may take, uh, it may, the sulfur put down may only drop the pH like 0.1 or if any. It takes a long time to acidify soil as opposed to lime where it's, it raises the pH a lot faster than it is to decrease the pH with sulfur. And most people recommend that no more than five pounds of sulfur be put down at any given time. In this particular case, this high yield bag is four pounds. So I'm gonna do, this is basically one dose. Now it's, it's a lot higher in price to go with a wettable sulfur like this compared to the granular, but it's a price I'm willing to pay uh, to reduce the pH in my soil. Um, uh, quickly and I and I feel and I feel that um, with with the super fine particles of sulfur getting deeper into the soil profile I would get a faster acidification of the soil so I'm willing to pay a little bit more for the powdered sulfur versus the granular sulfur and I only have 1100 square feet so that is a definite um, factor in deciding which sulfur that I want to go with I have about a gallon of water in this bucket here. I'm gonna just pour what I had in, that I dished out in this bowl in here. As well as, oops, as well as the rest of this bag. Sulfur is not the most toxic, but I do have my gloves on because the particles are so fine, they'll get into your pores and you will smell like sulfur, like a rotten egg for the next week, I promise. I normally do citric acid every two weeks, one pound of citric acid. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and mix that up as well. But for the citric acid, I'm gonna pour it into this container first. And I have some warm, warm water in it. It helps to dissolve it much quicker. And I'm gonna use the big paddle since I still have it attached. Whoa. And just like that, the citric acid is dissolved. I'll go ahead and add it into the mix here. I'm gonna add just a little bit more Pantera, just for the heck of it. 
as I really want this mixture to get down into the soil. Okay, starting to foam a little, so I'm gonna go ahead and get my anti-foamer at this point. So I'm using this Liquid Harvest No Foam. It's an anti-foaming agent. It says to use about one to two ounces per 100 gallons. And because it's only one gallon, I just really need a dash. Okay, just like that. <clears throat> and we'll give it a, a mix. You can almost see that the sulfur is settled at this point. Just to let you know, I am just about two gallons. The powder sulfur falls out of suspension really easily. So I want to keep this thing agitated as I, as I go. Okay, I have my backpack on and I'm doing the dance to keep the sulfur agitated. And I'll be doing the dance as I go. People doing things they hate just to fit in. I know it's easier to get along peacefully, but have you ever thought about you? Don't know why I keep on doing what I'm told to do. When the rules are made up by someone we never knew, baby, wipe your tears and hear me out. We don't need someone to feel all. just about emptied out my backpack sprayer there's still some more powder sitting at the bottom of the tank so I'm gonna go ahead and mix in some about two gallons of fresh water to help clear the tank of that as well as to push down the sulfur that I put out. So if you look across the yard you can see a white haze on it that's the sulfur sitting on the grass blades it's getting a little late here so I'm gonna go ahead and water it in with my hose and supposed to uh, turning on my irrigation. So I decided to turn on my irrigation anyways just to help the water um, push the sulfur down and the citric acid down into the soil. So I'm gonna let it run its course where it's gonna put down about a quarter of inch water to help get that sulfur where it needs to go. So to close putting down powdered sulfur on your lawn is a choice. It's a choice that I chose. It's a messy choice and you got to really think about it if you're going to use it. Um, spreading out granular sulfur is so much easier but I chose to go the powdered route and I hope uh, you enjoyed this video. All right guys to the next one. Aloha. Oh, I keep on doing what I'm told to